going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Sounds like the rejoicing has already started. Amen. Amen. Can y'all hear me in the back? Oh, yeah. For the people in the back, how about the people in the, in the uh, upper uh, rafters? How about the people out there in China, oh, England? Amen. Hey, look, I'm not kidding. We get notes from all over the country. I just saw someone the other day watch one of our uh, videos and said, man, y'all are doing a great job. I know this guy from a can of paint. Mm. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 I'm glad to be here. I am too. All right, that's two of you. <laughs> Let's go to our call to worship. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Let us come before him with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done great things. Has he done great, great things, things for you? I can, I can attest to you, I can attest that God is still in the business of doing what God does. Amen? Right. Amen. Amen. He is still a healer. He is still a fixer. Yeah. He is still a mender of broken hearts. He is still the lifter of our heads. He is still the one who pulls us out of a ditch when we fall into a ditch. He is still the one. He is still the one. Wasn't that a song? We still yes, having fun? <laughs> oh, from ABC. We're still having fun. We're still the one? Yeah. Well, he is, he is, well, God is the ABC. And all the way through uh, ABC, Omega, whatever. He's all of that. So, yeah. I, I thought that was a song. Amen. Amen. Hello to those who are in YouTube land. You, YouTube. Ooh, I'm making up some names today, Lord. YouTube land. Welcome to the World Victory Church and Life Center. Today is a good day. And if you don't think so, try missing one. Hello? So since we don't want to miss one yet until God tells us we're going to miss one, let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you, oh God, that you allowed us to get up this morning. We, allow, we thank you, God, that you allowed us to get dressed. And it might seem like a simple thing. It was so simple when we were younger. But we know, God, right now, sometimes it's a challenge. So the fact that you empowered us to get up, to get dressed, to come on down to the church, we thank you for the power you gave us to do that, God. We thank you for the life that you give us. We thank you for the breath that you give us. We thank you for everything, God, big and small. You tell us to never despise the day of small things, and we don't. We thank you, oh God, for health and strength. We thank you for family and friends. We thank you for fellowship. We thank you for allowing us to come into this building and fellowship together. God, we know you built us for fellowship. You built us to, to go through life with other people. So we thank you for all these opportunities. We lift up this service to you, God, that it would be pleasing in your sight that something is done or said here today, a touch, a smile, something is done or said that will lead one person, at least one person, to higher living, then we know that our work will be done here today. That's right. We pray for those who are sick with any kind of illness, whatever it is, knowing, oh God, that you are healer. Yes. And we pray for healing, we pray for, pray, pray for strength, we pray for guidance. In Jesus' name we pray. And they all said amen, amen, amen and amen. 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 We're going to have our ministry of sharing and blessing. Is it, it needs to be adjusted? The monitor is too high? It was, you can't hear me. No, we couldn't hear her what she said. Okay. Yeah, you won't hear her. You'll hear the instruments. That's, they, yeah, okay. All right, cool. Hey, we got to get the sound right. Hey, I don't mind stopping. Hey, because let me tell you something. The best service is the one that's heard. Because we, huh? Hey, I, I will stop at any time to get the sound right. Because I know people. And I know people that look like us. First thing you're going to say, well, I, ain't, I couldn't hear nothing. Click. Amen. Deacon Coppage, come on, give us our announcements. I know, I know my people. Amen. Amen. Hey, I got two more. I have two more cards. Awesome. Look at this. Some people sent cards. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. 
Happy Sunday, everyone. Happy Sunday. It's good to see all the faces out in the crowd this morning. As always, we like to acknowledge any visitors or guests we may have, so you don't have to stand up or say anything. Just raise your hand so we can acknowledge your presence here. Thank you, sir. Any others? So we thank you for uh, choosing World Victory as your place of worship this morning. And uh, we know you had other choices, but we're glad you chose us and hope that we do or say something that's going to uh, encourage you. So, so let's give them another round of applause. And I was going to mention that uh, I know everyone's been monitoring the, uh, the news, so you know that the Center for Disease Control has kind of lowered the risk environment for uh, the peninsula. So I think we went from high risk, now all, we're all the way down to uh, low risk, I believe, last I, I looked at it. So uh, that just uh, is an encouragement to say is, uh, is lower of a risk to, to, uh, to come back into the sanctuary and, and be in person uh, worshiping. So, uh, so if you're out there uh, in internet land, I just want to encourage you to come in and uh, come back and see us in person again. So, so this week, as you uh, have probably been following uh, Reverend uh, Jeff Jones, where he's uh, started his series on the Lenten season. So he's got, where we have 40 days of Lent that we're reviewing uh, scriptures. And uh, we passed out uh, last uh, Sunday, and I think they're available li this Sunday as well, and also on our, our church website, uh, the schedule for the daily readings, weekly readings. So I have uh, this week's readings on the board, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to adjust the, the font on it. So I know if you're here looking at it, you probably can't read it, it's too small, but I'll, I'll try to fix that next, uh, next week. But, but if you go on the website, you'll see the, uh, the schedule for, uh, for this week, and uh, you can follow along. And the other uh, portion of that is that uh, Reverend Jeff is also doing a week daily uh, YouTube uh, classes covering uh, the, discussions of the of the readings. So you do the readings on your own and then you can uh, tune in and listen to uh, his uh, explanation of the readings and teachings on those readings is very, uh, very good. And he's always uh, striving to educate us and helping us understand how the Bible is, uh, is written and how do we interpret it and how do we make the best, uh, most of that. So it's a very excellent um, opportunity to get the uh, life application uh, Bible study approach to, uh, to the training. So just encourage you to uh, read the materials and then dial in, uh, tune in each week, uh, each day to, to listen to uh, Reverend Jeff Jones as he uh, gives us those courses. I do want to start out just by expressing uh, deepest sympathies from World Victory Church and Life Center for the uh, family of Larry Davis on the passing of his mother, Miss Lillian Stewart, who passed on February 24th in Clearfield, Utah. Her funeral service will be on March 9th. So Larry uh, is here in Newport News, uh, and his address is available through the church office if you want to reach out, uh, send a card uh, of support to him and his family. So. We also have a couple of uh, cards I wanted to share with you. Uh, just to acknowledge, uh, you know, we always encourage you to continue to send cards and, and make calls to uh, those on our sick and shut-in list. And we always talk about how much of a benefit that is. So every time we get cards in, I try to read those and share those with you. Here's one from uh, our brother uh, Milton. So he's in the military and he's stationed over in Africa, or actually on the east coast of, of Africa. So he sends a note that says, uh, thank you all for your continued faith Love and support, it means a lot, and I miss you all. I love Milton. So we've, we've been sending him uh, some information and uh, corresponding with him, and in fact, one of the members this morning asked me about sending him, uh, sending Milton the, uh, the lentil uh, schedule so he can follow along uh, as well. So we're gonna do that and, uh, and support him in other ways that we can uh, just to encourage him and lift him up during this, uh, his, his deployment. Another card I want to share with you it says to Reverend uh, Jeffrey Jones and the World Victory Church and Life Center, words are not enough to express our, grateful, our gratefulness for opening your hearts and your church doors, enabling us to give my son 
Carrie Richardson, Jr., a wonderful home going. The kitchen, food, and all the trimmings were greatly appreciated and enjoyed. The Lord bless each of you and keep you as love the Richardson, Ross, and Whitehurst families. And one other a card to share with you. It said the Lord is with uh, you and, and, he is with, and he is for you. Jesus is victorious. We are praying for you and your church family and have and have and have in heavens ready for you. Let's bring in, let's bring it all together. Blessings. This is Richard, and I can't read the last name. Fortunately, let's see. Richard uh, Young from Newport News. And it's just an expression of uh, thank you for the ministry and, uh, and us and being uh, supportive of the, of the church family. So, so as always, we want to share those, um, those things with you when we can and encourage you to uh, send notes to the, to the uh, church office if you uh, have some information you want us to announce or to, to make our, your church family aware of. Please, uh, please do that so we can continue to stay in touch with one another. Uh, and that's all I had for announcements. Do we have any... Uh, anniversaries to celebrate this morning. Any anniversaries? Under the choir? I do have one from the, uh, the Whitleys. We haven't seen them in a while because of uh, some health issues, uh, but uh, the Whitleys are celebrating their 55th wedding anniversary on Thursday. So that's Thursday, March 3rd, and they said, uh, sadly, due to those health issues we mentioned, they're on, they're not able to physically attend the church services, but they do watch each, uh, each Sunday online. So just uh, our congratulations and, and prayers for the, for the Whitley families. And do we have any uh, birthdays to celebrate from last Wednesday to this Thursday? Any birthdays? Where's her event? Nothing? Okay. <laughs> All right, we got to have some birthdays somewhere out there. They're just not here in the sanctuary. So we're going to sing happy birthday anyway for those out in the in internet land. So. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. birthday happy birthday someone had it so uh, let me just make sure I do this every week right it's important to tell you that we're going to do something and then do it and then tell you that we did it right so uh, Deacon Coppage mentioned we've been posting these 40 days of Lenten uh, season posts through YouTube and um, how many of you have seen them okay great let's make sure that you're sharing that so I can look at uh, YouTube and see who, not who shares, but how things get shared. Some people are sharing right back to me. <laughs> hey, hey, it's new, it's new for some of us. Let's just say that. But the point is, you all have networks, right? So you hit share to everybody. If you just want to tell me I did a good job, you can say that while you're sharing to someone else. Say, good job, Jeff, and then hit share so everybody can get it. Amen? When you share just back with me, that's mean you saw it, I saw it. Amen? <laughs> All right. So uh, you got to have fun with it. The other thing is um, last week a few people asked me, they said, hey, you know, we should be recording these services. Mm. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, but, <laughs> you know, they say if you throw a rock in front of a, a bunch of people, the one that houses, the one that got hit. That, that one, okay. So, so look. These are on YouTube, so here's what you do. If you have a phone, you don't have to do this yourself. If you have a phone, Android, iPhone, whatever, right, call one of your relatives, son, daughter, somebody, and say, look, put YouTube on my phone. Don't you try to figure it out. Just call somebody and say, put YouTube on my phone. And once you get YouTube on your phone, you can tap that thing, and you can listen to these all day long, every one of them. We have, like, now 100-plus out there, right? But you got to have YouTube, Amen. So that's the answer to our recording. We, we've moved on from CDs and things like that. Amen. Amen. 
Yeah, yeah cuz that 12 cents a piece was killing us. <laughs> no, just kidding. All right. And the last thing is this. The purpose of World Victory Church and Life Center is to what? Help people meet God through Jesus Christ who will help meet who will meet all of their needs at every age and stage of life. And that means we've got to continue to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ because I believe every word of it. I believe the, the gospel when the gospel tells us that we need to worship, we need to be in fellowship, we need to focus on discipleship, we need to focus on ministry, and we need to focus on reaching out to people. Amen? Amen. And so the effort that we're taking place now with the 40 days of Lent, and that's part of our discipleship. We're trying to make the words of the Bible leap off those pages. Amen? Amen. Last thing, because y'all are going to laugh at this, I might as well tell you. I don't know which day it was. I don't know, it was yesterday or the day before. I was filming one day before. Day before. Oh, you know, for sure. <laughs> she said, well, they, so look, if you watch Fridays, what you're going to see is I tried to put this uh, a paper over the screen because sometimes when you're looking at the, the camera, you end up looking at yourself. So I had this big binder clip that was holding this folder over so I couldn't see myself. Well, while I was talking, the binder clip shot off like, like this. And then, and then you see me go, whoa, whoa. But I came back. But I, I, I'm not going to lie, I was a little nervous. I didn't know what was going on. I said, it's the Lord, I'll tell you. <laughs> Amen. So I'm telling you right now, you're going to laugh. So just, hey, I'm okay with it. Just, it's funny to me too. Let's go to our collection. At World Victory Church and Life Center, we have one offer, right? Now, because of technology, we have many ways to give. We have uh, boxes in the back. You can go and drop your envelope in, envelope in there. You can send your contribution through the mail, right? You can... Send your contribution through Givelify. That's an app that you can send your money. You can also go through our website. So there are many ways to give that. So I'm just going to hold up this one collection device and say, everybody, uh, give your contribution. Bam. Okay, they just did it. Who's blessing the offering? Deke, bless this offering so we can move on. Amen. Amen. Ooh, thanks, <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Would you pray with me? Father, we just thank you for allowing us to be here this day. Yes. Not to mention that you made it able for us to bring our gifts and offerings to you. Yes, Lord, yes. We ask you to bless them, guide us in using them, so that we can promote you here at World Victory and throughout this community. This is our prayer in the precious name of Jesus. And let the church say amen. Amen. This song says, You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up. You are my strength, strength like no other.
Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be here? Because uh, the, the first time I asked it about 25 minutes ago, there were two of you, and I wanted to see if the number went up. It did? Amen. Amen. I'm going to read the text, and then we're going to pray, and we're going to get right through this. Amen? So we're going to be, today we're going to look at Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. If you have your Bibles with you or in YouTube land, if you just hold it in your hand and shake it a little bit and open it, it'll open to Psalm because it's in the middle of the Bible. No, I'm not kidding. It really will. Amen. So Psalm 91, verses 14 through 16. I'm going to read from the New International Version, but if you have any book in your hand called Bible, you'll be able to follow. Amen. Amen. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I'm going to speak to you today from the subject, the trust factor. Right. The trust factor. Right. Let us pray. God, I thank you for this opportunity to speak to your people, both here in the sanctuary and in the virtual sanctuary. I thank you, God, and I, uh, you know that I've done the work, and I pray, God, that you would speak through me so your people would hear a word from you. For we love you, and we want to unlock the mysteries of your word for your people. In Jesus' name we pray, and they all said amen, amen, amen and amen. amen. So I am bound and determined, it's been this way for a long time, to unlock the mysteries of the Bible. There are many people who, throughout their lives, will beat themselves up as they advance in age by saying things like, well, I should have known that. How come I'm not better with this? I should learn this. And they beat themselves up to the point where they stop reading their Bible. They figure I'll never get it. And that's not true. Why would God inspire people to write a book that you could never get? That wouldn't make sense, would it? But there is an enemy who doesn't want you to know, who doesn't want you to understand, who doesn't want you to unlock the mysteries. Amen? So my job in the discipleship area is to unlock these mysteries. Amen? And we're going to look at a psalm today. Psalm 91. I want to break down for you, first of all, what psalms are. They're songs. Music. Songs. Right? So, you all know you cannot read a comic book the same way you read a novel. Right? You can't read a fiction novel the same way you read a history book. Right? So, there are certain ways of reading things based on what the writer was trying to do or the type of writing. That makes sense, right? Shout out for me your favorite song. Doesn't matter what it is. Don't get all holy nah. unless you need to be. Shout out. What's your favorite song? Yeah. Not met everybody. Shout out your favorite song. What's your favorite song? Keep your head to the sky. Keep your head. Oh, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Woo. Who else? Give me some names. He's concerned. Give me some more names. Who? Re Reason. That's right. That's a blue light in the basement special right there. I don't know about it. I read about it. Back in the day, they used to have these parties and they had blue lights, blue lights in the basement and reasons from Earth, Wind, and Fire used to play. I, don't, I wasn't there, but I heard about it. And sometimes they would, oh, never mind. I was going to say they would, I was going to say they would unscrew the blue light, but I, I didn't say that. Give me another couple songs. I'm so, I wasn't there. Okay, I'm lying. I was there. What, give me another couple songs. <laughs> That was, no, wait, wait, wait. That was Can't Hide Love. I, I named that in two notes. Don't play with me. That was Can't Hide Love by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Here's the point. With every one of your favorite songs, you know all the words. You know the words, right? You know that in those songs, sometimes they rhyme and sometimes they don't, right? You also know that in those songs, not everything in the song is factual because it's a song trying to tell a story, right? Am I right? You know what your song is. Well, yeah. psalms are songs. There were pe so people who write songs write them for a specific reason, at, for a specific time, right? For a specific purpose. And that's what psalms are. Right. What happens with psalms, though, is people don't recognize that they're songs. So they try to take the scriptures and make it literal. And all it is is a song. How many of you, when you're discouraged or you feel bad or something's not working, you got a song, your go-to song? 
You got your go-to, right? We, my, Sheila has a go-to. <laughs> Sheila has a go-to. Look. So, you know, sometimes we have uh, husband and wife discussions. Sheila will play this song. Which is it by Kenny Rogers? You can't make me love right, that's the one. <laughs> she will play. <laughs> Sheila will play You Can't Make Me Love You by Kenny Rogers. So if I come in the house and I say, oh, Lord, here's Kenny Rogers. And she got this thing on loop. I, I, you can't make me love you. I can't. So everybody's got a go-to, right? Right. Because those go-tos, they encourage you, right? That's what the Psalms are for. They're go-tos that when you're in trouble, when something's going on, you find a song and you go to it. It's funny that y'all mentioned Earth, Wind, and Fire because Earth, Wind, and Fire says, sing a song, it'll make your day. Still, Paul said, chant a psalm a day, right, for you reggae lovers. Quincy Jones wrote a song called What Good is a Song? And in that song, he had this line that says, what good is a song? What good is a song? If a song cannot take you higher, then it's not good enough to sing. Hello? So these songs, they mean something. Now, listen, for the, for the OGs in here, see, that's what the young people call us. We're intergenerational here. We're intergenerational. The young folks will call us the OGs. So OGs, our young people love God just like we do. Right? There's no such thing as gospel music. There's gospel lyrics. If, if a young person takes some gospel lyrics and the love of the Lord, they put it on a trap beat, mind your own business. You don't have to talk about why did they put that on that beat. Because y'all remember when Kirk Franklin was going to bust hell wide open? Y'all remember that, right? 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 But, but what is Kirk Franklin now? He's an OG, <laughs> right? So what I'm saying is, look, if we're going to be intergenerational, if we're going to do what God tells us to do, we have to stop tripping over what people do and look at what they're listening to. What are the words? Yes. If I spit a rhyme that says, I love God, and he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the, the shadow of the Almighty, why do you care if I was rapping it? Mind your business. Hello? The message can never change. But the method has to. And it changes by generation. So each generation, mind your business, and then where we intersect, we help each other. Amen? So songs are important. So this particular song, we're going to make this one leap off the page. This song should leap off the pages to you. Why should you even listen to Psalm 91? Why should you even care? Well, one of the things I said when we were uh, doing the videos, I said, when you come to church, or you pick up your Bible, one of the best ways to really get engaged with the text is to come with a problem. Come with something you're trying to get fixed. Amen? So if, if you were to ask me, why should you even be concerned about Psalm 91? Well, do you, have you ever had a time where you needed assurance? Have you ever struggled with belief? How about when you're under circumstances? Hmm? Anybody ever been discouraged? Felt like you were in danger? Needed to depend on someone? Your faith got challenged? You had fear of something in your life? Well, then don't tell me that these scriptures don't mean something to you, but it's our job to show you how to make it work for you. Amen? Anybody ever been in need of more love? How about protection? Power in your relationships? On and on and on. If you have any of those issues, you need to be paying attention to Psalm 91. Hello? So I think we're all in, we're all in now, right? Yeah. Amen. We're all in. So in verse 14 through 16, I'm going to point to these, but I'm going to go back into the text to, to tell you some things. In verse 14, the writer says, Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. That is God speaking. Yeah. So even in a song, even in your favorite songs, you ever notice they change who's speaking? Right? Sometimes the man's singing to the woman and then the words change. Right? So in this particular area, God is saying to this person, to this person, what he's going to do. So why we call this a, the trust factor is because trust means a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Did you hear me? It's the firm belief 
in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. In this entire Psalm 91, this is a song for you to encourage yourself when you're going into battle, whatever battle it is that you're going through, because we do go through battles, amen? Right, we go through challenges. So when we go back to verse one, I'm gonna break this whole thing down for you. Say, break it up, Jeff. Break it up, Jeff. Okay, good, I'll keep going since y'all asked me to. I was gonna stop. <laughs> Psalm 91, depending on your version, says, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Some say, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. The first thing you need to know about this psalm is the writer put you in it immediately. You, you are in this psalm immediately. When the psalm says, He who dwells, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, that's you. This tells you that this is your song. When you are in despair, when you are in trouble, you say, I dwell within the shelter of the Most High, and I will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will. See, when you read these songs, songs, you've got to be personal. You've got to get personal. That's why I asked you all what was your favorite song. Those songs are personal to you, am I right? Well, in this case, it's I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. What is the shelter of the Most High? It is the temple of God. It is where God's people meet, right? It is the temple. It's the building, but it's the virtual temple. Wherever people are getting together, that is the shelter of the Most High. The Most High God. Not the most, not the lowest, I almost said most low. Not the lowest God, but the Most High God. He is the God of the mountains. You look at the highest peak and he is higher than that. He knows all. He sees all. So when you are in the shadow of the Almighty, that is a big deal. That is strengthening. Are y'all following me? Well, let's talk about the shadow. Let's break it on down. There was a time in the Old Testament where Moses could not see God. So what God said was, I will go before you so that my shadow, my shadow will cover you. It's the shadow of God. If God owns the universe, how big is that shadow? Right? This is your song. I want to be in the shadow of God. I want to be shadowed by him. Now, that's a shadow for you. Am I right? See, this song is for you if you make the words leap off the page, right? This is serious business. And then in verse uh, uh, 2, he says, I will say of the Lord, I, I. That's you. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. That is you telling God you know who he is. You are my fortress. You are my strength. You are my fortress. You are my strength. In you I trust. How do you think God feels when he hears you say, I know you're the one. I know you're the one and I trust you. And I will follow you because you have proven your reliability, your truth, your ability, your strength. You are God. You can imagine if you let these words leap off the page. See, what happened was when you were young, we went to school. They taught us how to read out loud. And as soon as you could prove that you could read, they told you to stop reading out loud. They, they told you to stop. So we've been reading silently our whole lives. When you are singing your favorite song, isn't your mouth open, right? I challenge you, go find the lyrics to your favorite song. Try to read them silently. You can't do it. You're gonna sing it. And so we have been fooled because not knowing how this was written to keep quiet on these songs. But these are things that you're singing, amen? So he says, back to 14, he says, because you know my name. Well, God's name is not just most high, it's El Elyon. It means the most high. So this writer is putting in a song, if you're in trouble, repeat God's name. He, it's not just that he's almighty, that's a name. It's not just a condition, it is a name of God. So you're calling his name. And so the writer says, that God said, because you know my name, I will protect you. How do you know when someone knows your name? They say it. Y'all been in situations where you know somebody does not remember your name, and they're just looking for a lifeline. Am I right? 
Well, I'm so crazy. I just say, you know, I don't remember your name, especially when they try to make you remember it. Y'all know what that, you know, I'm so-and-so's son. I don't know you. I'm sorry. Can you just tell me your name? Right? So these things, you got to understand, are for you. So in this writing, the way it's written, it brings you into the text, right? It has you name who God is, and then it gives you reasons why you think God is who he says he is or why you think God does what he says he does. So when you break down Psalm, uh, verses 3 through, thir- 3 through 13, this is a list. It's a catalog. Okay, you said I'm your refuge. Refuge. You said I'm your fortress. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because you saved me from the fowler's snare and from the deadly pestilence. You know what a fowler is? The fowler is the one who catches those big birds, like eagles and raptors and all that, right? And they put shields over them. They cover their wings, right? So this, when he talks about the fowler, it's talking about evil that men do because this is a song. It's not talking about an actual fowler. It's a song. Because in the songs you like, don't they use metaphors? Right? So the fowler is the evil that men do. And this this text is saying he's going to save you from the evil that men do. And from the deadly pestilence. Whatever disease that's coming around, he's going to save you from that. But this is a song, my friends. It is not prophecy. This is not talking about the coronavirus because some people want to say, oh, they must be talking about corona. No, it's a song. It is a song. Pestilence is anything else that's coming at you. You can say corona, you can say all these things, but it's really anything. So now you dwell in the shelter of the Most High and you abide under the shadow of the Almighty and you're saying to the Almighty, I'm doing that because you cover me, right? Right? Under your wings, I find safety. Wait a minute. He gave the writer because it's a song. He gives one example of someone who's covering up wings. But then he comes back and says, but you, God will wrap his wings around you. He's using what is meant for bad and saying we can use that for good. Is anybody following me? But you have to make the words leap. You got to make them leap. You got to read it. You got to read it out loud. You can't just say, well, he who dwells in the shelter. That's that's not going to work for you. Am I right? Right? Y'all don't sing uh, looking out the window. I mean, uh, y'all know that song. Yeah, y'all don't read smoking out the window. (laughs) I heard about that song. You don't say that that the same way you say the words, the reasons. Let me me move on. I don't know nothing about this. (laughs) I don't know nothing about this smoking out the window. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day in verse 5, right? It's not a specific terror. There are all kinds of things that come up against you, right? There's arrows. Someone's always shooting darts and arrows trying to get you. Am I right? Am I right? And we're dodging, right? We're waging war against principalities, things that are coming against us. And you need strength for the journey. You need to have something inside of you that can come up. You know what? I might be in trouble, but I dwell in the shelter of the Most High. Yep, I'm confident in God. He's rescued me from the snare of the fowler. When there were other things coming against me, he pulled me out of that ditch, and I have no reason to believe that he won't. This is how we have to talk to ourselves when we're reading this text. Amen? All right, so let me commit this one act of y'all going to just say I'm crazy. If you got a King James Bible, just go put it in the back window of your car. Let the leather crack. Leave that thing alone. Jesus wasn't born in 1611. It's a translation like anything else. If you're out here trying to read this old English, that's like trying to read Shakespeare. And you're beating yourselves up saying, I don't understand it. Well, who understands Shakespeare? Who understands 1600 English? Shoot, I'm struggling with 2022. You can see that right now. Amen? Let me move on because we can't stay here all day. Let Let me move on. But so God is your protector. So back in 14 through 16, remember what he's saying. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Because he loves me. That's you. Because you love him. But you love him because of all the things he's done in your life. Right? He says, 
and I'm just going randomly here so you get the feeling, right? It says sometimes you may feel like other people are winning, but I guarantee you a 1,000 will fall on this side and 10,000 will fall on this side and no plague shall come upon your life and you will see the destruction of the wicked, right? You will see these people fall. But of course, it's not a 1,000 and 10,000. It's a song. It's many. You will see people who are doing you wrong fall. You will see people who are not treating you and others right. You will see them fall if you keep your eyes open. This encourages you. Is anybody encouraged? Yeah. Right? But you've got to read the text like you know what it's telling you. And look at this in verse 11. It says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. He, who is he? God. God will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. How many of you have angels? Okay, raise your hand if you have angels. Okay, see, some of y'all are being real holy. What is an angel? You're struggling with something. Somebody calls you on the phone and they say, you know what, I don't know why, but something just told me to call you. What did you think that was? What, what did you think that was? We're not looking for something flying around like this with wings. You're walking down the street and someone says, hey, there's a ditch over there. Don't go that way. What did you think that was? Hello? You all have angels, so you got to understand God has been dispatching angels in your life forever. But what happens is we look at the times that we're losing, right? We look at the times where something didn't go right, right? And we take those and think that's the sum total of God. But how many things has God done right in your life? How many? You can't count them, right? For every bad day that you've had, how many good ones did you have? But if the enemy can get you to think God is not who he says he is, if the enemy can get you to think God doesn't rescue you, right? If the enemy can get you to think God doesn't answer prayer, you're toast. Hello? Right? Now, let's, 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 let's go ahead and lock this down because we could talk about this all day. Here's the thing. God doesn't answer every prayer. You know that, right? And let's get even more specific. There's going to be one prayer in your life that we know is not going to get answered. We already know. We already know. Because we all have to leave here. Right? Some of us, not to be too morbid, some of us will, we won't be sick. We'll just pass on. Our loved ones will be in a lot of pain because we left, but we're just going to ease out. But for some of us, we're going to be sick. And there's going to be family praying for us. Lord, heal my loved one. God, heal my loved one, and someone's going to pass. And if you're not paying attention, you will be one of those people that says, well, God is not who he says he is. God did not answer my prayer. I asked God to save my loved one, and he didn't do it. I asked God to keep them alive, and he didn't do it. We all know we're going to experience that one. Are you going to let that one, which is inevitable, Get you away from the millions upon millions and millions of things that God has done for you? Hello? Do you know that sometimes healing takes place in glory? Hello? Are y'all with me? So no, he doesn't answer every prayer. No, he doesn't fix everything. And this text is not saying that. This text is for encouragement. Right? So when he says in verse 8, you will observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. We've been hurt before. How many of you have lost a game of any kind? Didn't you say you were going to win before you started? Right? So we know we don't win everything, but it doesn't stop you from saying, I'm going to win this game. I, I, this person's not going to beat me. Don't you say it? These are words of encouragement designed for you to use them because this writer was going through something. And so there's a pattern to this. You insert yourself in the text. You give a list of what God has done for you. And then God comes back and talks to you. That's what 14 and 16 is about. In 14 through 16, well, let me tell you about this line too because some people do this and they're going crazy, right? In verse uh, 13, ooh, this is so crazy. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Now, you go ahead and grab this cobra if you want to. You're going to die. Huh? These people tempting God, 
go ahead and get your bag of snakes. You're going to die. Okay? If you happen to be so lucky that one time, the next time you won't be. These pe people are tempting God. Keep going to the zoo and teasing those lions. Go in there and fight a lion if you want to. You're going to die. Huh? When I was, uh, I had a German shepherd. His name was Tim. Don't laugh at him. That's his name. His name was Tim. This old man used to come by and tease Tim all the time. We'd have him on a chain. That's before Peter was invented. So we had him on a chain, right? And the man would come by the fence and tease him every day, right? So one day me and my brother are out in the yard. We're playing baseball, and Tim is not on the chain. But Tim is out here running around with us. But then Tim runs back to the tree where the train was, or where his chain was. He runs back to the tree, and he sits right next to the tree. And me and my brother look at him like, what is, what is he doing? Because he just ran like, Shh. Well, what we didn't know is Tim, oh, eagle eye, saw the man coming down the street. Hello? Hello? The man, the man gets, if that's where Tim's tree was and the fence was right here. This man gets right about here, gets ready to say something. This German shepherd took one step, jumped straight over the fence, knocked this man down, ripped his coat up, all kinds of stuff. We had to pull the dog off of him. Go and mess with them lions and see what happens. Because the lions, he's a bigger than German shepherds. I'm going to tell you that right now. Right? But he says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I, and I will answer him. The other thing I want you to take from this is people will use Scripture against you. You do know that, right? Oh, um, they'll make up all kinds of things. You know, y'all women should be quiet in the church. Right. It's a lie. It's a lie from the pit of hell. But it is in the Bible. Right? And now you've got generations and generations of men saying women should be quiet in the church and women saying we should be quiet in the church because someone took that scripture and told a lie about it. The only thing that was happening was there were some people way over here, some ladies because they kept people separated, and there were some men over here. And so these ladies were asking these folks questions way on the other side of the sanctuary. Right? So Paul in his letter is saying, I went to this church and I saw these people yelling across the sanctuary, y'all need to tell those women to stop talking in the church because they were talking across the sanctuary. He was talking about one thing that was going on. How many people have had their lives turned upside down, arguing with folks because somebody said, stop talking in the church for a lie? Well, there's a lie in this one too. The devil, when he was tempting us, Jesus in the wilderness, right? Use verse 11. He said, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. The devil used that same scripture to tempt Jesus. And Jesus said, you should not tempt the Lord your God. What's the point? What's the point? Here's the point. This is a song. And just like every song that you know, the ones that you love, the ones that encourage you, right? The ones that lift you up, you sing that song. Right, and if you don't know, know this song, they have modern day psalmists who take these things, right, and they say, well, there's no music for the people, I'll put some music on it. Fred Hammond wrote a song called Dwell. He said, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the, of the Almighty. Whatever storm arise won't touch me because my eyes are stayed on him. He is my king. Fred Hammond gave you some music if you want to go listen to it. You can find this psalm, you can find these words, you can use these words. They can change your life. They can encourage you if you determine to let the words leap off the page. He said, oh, what peace there is to know that he is wherever I go. Wherever I go, there's nothing that he can't see. That's what this text is saying. And in him, I have victory. So the point is this. It's a song. Sing your song. Sing your song. Don't let anybody tell you to stop singing. You sing, if they tell you to stop, you tell them to take a flying leap out of a first floor window. They won't get hurt, but they'll get the point. Amen? Amen? Y'all with me? The doors of the church are open. You may be here today, or you may be in YouTube land, or you may see this later in the week, and if you do not have a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ, we call that salvation, right? Because God gives us long life through eternity. And you don't have the relationship. We're offering that to you right now. You merely just need to pray, God, I know that I am a sinner. 
I don't understand it all. I don't know it all. But I want to be saved. And if you utter that prayer and that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, then you are saved. That's it. Now, you have work to do to make these pages leap, these words leap off the page. Or you may not be a member of a church. We think that World Victory Church and Life Center is a great place for you to become a member of. It doesn't matter your age or stage of life. We're here for intergenerational. We're here for everybody. Amen? Amen. Because the God we serve says that we need to meet the needs of everyone at every age and stage of life. Come on, choir. Sing, and then we're going to do communion, and then we're going to go home, and we're going to go sing some songs. And I can't believe y'all know all them secular songs. I can't believe y'all know them. <laughs> I love you 
Amen. How y'all feeling? Amen. Feeling good? I know I am. I know I am. So every month, on the first Sunday, we celebrate or commemorate the birth, the life, the death, the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we approach this Lenten season, where we are, we were working towards 40 days for Easter, it's even more important to realize that Jesus has started a trek on the way ultimately to his death. But three days later, he gets up with all power. That is the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the whole gospel, that Christ was born for our sins. He walked through this earth doing good, but some evil people crucified him. It was a horrible death on the cross. Then they buried him in a tomb. And they went back there three days later looking for him and he was gone. And then he came back and appeared to some other people and they knew then that he was who he said he was. So we celebrate this every month. So let us pray. God, we thank you for an opportunity to participate in the sacraments. God, we ask that you would turn the worldly into the spiritual so that this bread and this wine may fill our souls as food does our bodies. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. So as the story goes, in the upper room he took bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body which was broken for you. Likewise, he took the cup and he held it up and he said, this is the blood of the new covenant which was shed for you. Let us drink together, amen. So here's how this works. You come up, you all rise, you come up out of your aisle, go that way, first row, go by the table, pick up your sacraments. You know how y'all did it in the Baptist church when y'all collected money? Come out like this, go right back to your seat, just like that. Don't have no meetings. Some of y'all had meetings last week, last month. Come on up, everybody rise, and you're going row at a time. Right, there you go, there you go. Wait your toe, wait your turn. Yep, got to wait till the row goes before you. There you go. Wait for the row to go in front of you. Go ahead, no, y'all go. Go ahead. Come on. Yeah, you, yeah. Yeah, come on. That's it. That's right. And then you go right back. There you go.
Was anyone omitted in the passing of the bread and the wine? All right, so here's how this works. Turn to the bread side, go ahead and lift that lid off of there. This is the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was broken for you. Let us eat together. Flip that over one time, go ahead and take the lid off of that. This is the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was shed for you. Let us drink together. Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. Hold on to that cup. There will be some receptacles outside so that we don't leave them in the sanctuary. Well, we hope that something was done or said here today that lifted you just a little bit higher in the living of your life. Amen. Life is difficult. Good to see you all. You should have seen you all walking up here. Some of y'all were limping. Some of y'all were rolling. But you made it. And that's all that matters, right? It doesn't matter how you got there. As long as you get there. That's like we done it. Olita Adams Church. Get here if you can. Amen. Amen. But we know life is difficult. That's why we leave with the same benediction every week. In this world, you shall have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Go in peace. Have a lovely day. Remember, God loves you so very much, and so do we. Amen.